Hi everyone, my name is Florence and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my top 14 houseplants for beginners. I'm going to go through different sorts of light, watering, care systems and everything to get you started as a beginner. Now for those who've just got into the plant hobby and have all of the common plants that you can think of, I'm going to touch on a couple of rare easy care ones at the end of this video, which aren't as cheap, but for the rare plants, they are at the cheap end scale. I'm going to be completely honest with you, if you're a beginner, I'd stay away from things like fiddly fig, ferns, alocasia, calathea, because I think they'll just stress you out. If you see a plant that you like, do your research. Of course, I touch on the very basics in this video, but ultimately, research a plant before it comes into your home and that way you know whether you can give the care for it that it needs to thrive. Of course, it's all trial and error. And these plants are at the cheaper end of the scale here in Europe. I'm not sure about America, I'm sure they will be as well. But stick to cheap plants first and see whether you can keep them alive, see what works in your home. I'm just gonna split this video into two parts. One will be talking about north and east facing windows and the other will be about south and west. North and east tend to get morning sun and south and west tend to get afternoon sun which is a lot harsher and it's for a longer period of time throughout the day. If you're not sure what direction your windows face and what way the light comes in, the easiest way to get an idea of this is just to get your phone, get your compass app, point your phone towards the window. Just before we start, I'm no expert, so take things I say with a pinch of salt. I've been growing house plants for about six years and many of these plants that I'm gonna to mention today were my first plants in my collection. The first house plant on my list is the spider plant. Now, I know what you're all thinking. My grandma has these, these are really boring. They're not, they are absolutely awesome. They are such hardy house plants and absolutely brilliant for beginners. Now, if your grandma has one, ask her for a cutting. I'll explain that in a second. But these come in several different varieties. The three most common are the ones with white variegation, the curly bonnie, and the fully green spider plant. You should be able to find these in any big box store, any house plant shop, on Facebook Marketplace, honestly anywhere, and they will cost you next to nothing. They're great for hanging plants, you can have them sat on a table, honestly just about anywhere. I have these hung on my wall in these baskets. So, producing babies, they create these offsets and fronds come out and the babies start from here. You just pop them off and put them in water or soil, super easy. And if you research more on that, there's in-depth guides on how to propagate spider plants. They do flower, but the flowers aren't actually all that interesting. They're little white flowers with no scent at all. But these are super quick growing and can live almost anywhere in your home. They're a great plant to build up your confidence if you're new to the houseplant world, as they're practically indestructible. They like bright indirect light. Now what I mean by that is that they don't like harsh bright sunlight all day. So a northeast facing window would be ideal for this. You can have it pulled back. The white variegated and the curly bonnies, basically any plant with white in it will need a bit more light than the fully green plants. So make sure you have these a little bit closer to the window or in a bit better light than the fully green ones. I'm not completely limiting any of these plants to northeast facing windows whatsoever. You can have them in a southwest room. That's absolutely fine. Just have them pulled back so they're not getting direct sun. If you have them in too bright a sun, you'll notice leaf burn, which means that they will all go brown. And I know that you're thinking, oh, well, there's some brown tips to the edge of this one. That's irregular watering. But it's so common in house plants and especially spider plants that I really wouldn't worry. You'll know when to water these because these tend to go a bit paler. You can probably see here actually that this isn't the most vibrant green and that is when you need to water them. Right, the next plant that I'm going to talk to you about is Epiprenums, otherwise known as Pothos. These are also called Devil's Ivy and there's a reason why they're called Devil's Ivy. They are invasive in their natural habitat which makes them super rewarding to grow because they grow so quickly. Now, there's lots of different varieties. You've got the Epipremnum in Joy, you've got the Marble Queen Pothos, which has speckled variegation, or you've got the Golden Pothos, has golden streaks through the leaves. 
Now, I know a lot of you are wondering, how do I grow this? Honestly, any way you want. You can have it in soil, you can have it in water propagating. This one's been sat in water for about 18 months and is super happy. I mean, just look at these roots. You can have them as hanging plants, you can have them trailing up something or climbing. You can have them again sat on the desk and keep pruning them back. It's, they're really, honestly, impossible to kill, which is another reason why they're a great beginner plant. The leaves do tend to droop or curl when they need watering, so it will tell you, obviously, this doesn't need watering because it's sat in water. And they have a really cool growth pattern. I'll show you the one that's sat behind me up here, which goes all the way around the massive wall hanging that we've got. If they are sat in soil, I'd really let them dry out before you water them again. This is really important because otherwise they might get root rot and the plant will die. There are absolutely loads of different varieties of these and one thing that I will say is those with whiter variegation or more variegation can tolerate higher light, the same with the spider plants. Now if you get a pole for this to trellis on or if you're letting it climb, the leaves will get bigger and if you have it as a hanging plant, those leaves won't tend to get bigger than probably about that right there, just because they're not in their natural environment and normally these climb up trees. They can deal with much lower light conditions than a lot of other plants and for that reason if you've got a dark corner which does still get indirect natural light or you have grow lights then these are perfect. I will say that if they don't get enough light you can see here that this is getting less and less yellow in the leaves so it is reverting. That's because I don't have it in the best light but if you're okay with just green foliage then go for it because, like I said, you can grow these in any way that you want. Another absolute favourite of mine is Dracaena, formerly known as Sansevieria, and the common names involve mother-in-law's tongue or snake plants. You can find these absolutely everywhere, there's hundreds of different varieties, so you won't be sure on what sort to choose. They add a really cool structural element to your home. They do get a bit dusty, I'm not sure if you can see me wiping the dust off. So make sure that you just get a wet cloth and wipe the leaves every now and then. These can live in pretty dark corners for a few years. Obviously after three years or so you might see that there's been no new growth. So just put it in a brighter spot for a couple of months and then move it back to where you wanted it. These are extremely slow growers if you have them in poor light. But, like I said, they won't shrivel up and die immediately, so in that sense they can tolerate somewhere with hardly any natural light. Obviously, the brighter the light, the more water they need. They create little pups out of the soil, so you will notice that there's new growth coming through on this one. They can tolerate full sun if you want that, and they'll put out more growth than they would if they were in a dark corner. The more light you give it, the longer they'll become the one mistake that beginner hobbyists make with snake plants is too much water. These can tolerate about a month without any water and if you overwater them they do tend to rot. I will say I wouldn't keep these in a bathroom or a high humidity area without good light just because the soil will then struggle to dry out and it can rot from the base. So I'd hold back on the watering on these and less is more as far as these are concerned. Right, the next plant that I have for you guys is the ZZ plant. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the full name, but these are super waxy, can deal with hardly any light. I have this in my hallway, which has no windows except for one skylight down the other end, and although it hasn't grown loads, it is now pushing up new growth. These can survive in super low light, but they also thrive in much brighter light. So if you want more growth out of these, pull them a bit closer to the window. You'll notice if they start to burn because they'll get crispy edges and go a bit brown. They're super easy to propagate. You just chop off a stem, shove it in water and it might take a hell of a long time to get roots, but it will eventually and then you just pop it back in the pot or a different pot and give it to a friend. There are several different varieties of this. This is actually the Raven ZZ, which means that it's very dark foliage. There's green ZZs, which are this colour. And a really cool fact about the Raven's Easy is that the new growth comes in bright green and it darkens over time. So I've actually mixed in some normal green ZZ plants with this 
so I have no idea what is going to darken and what's not. They have super waxy leaves because this stops any water from evaporating through the leaf and this means that they do not need watering all the time. I water this one maybe once every three weeks because it gets zero light so there's not much to dry out the soil. And if you were to ever dig up this plant from the soil, you'd be confused because you'd see little potatoes <laughs> under the soil. They're called rhizomes and that's where the plant sucks in its water. Those then grow roots. They are prone to root rot if you overwater them. So again, hold back and water in relation to the light that you've got it in. They're super low maintenance, so you can just shove them on a shelf and forget about them for a couple of weeks. Every couple of weeks, bring them down and water them and they'll be happy. Okay, the next plant I don't actually have, but I'm going to talk to you about it anyway because it's a great plant for beginners and people who don't want to maintain a plant but want something alive. They're called Marimo Moss, and you might have seen on a few pages on Instagram or in a friend's home that they have little balls of moss in a glass jar filled with water. Now, these aren't actually moss, they're algae, so they need water at all times. They can live in a super dark corner, of course, give it some natural light. As long as there's a window in that room, they should be fine. So if you've got a spot on your bookcase or a shelf or, you know, honestly anywhere, they will survive. They're super slow growing. I think they grow something like five millimeters a year and they live for hundreds of years, literally. So they can become a family heirloom. Now, if they lose their shape, all you have to do is just roll it in your hands again to create a ball. And because they're algae, you will notice potentially, depending on what sort of water you're using to water them, they might go green around the edges of the glass. Don't use any chemicals on this, just get a little toothbrush or a brush and scrub it off, rinse the water out and start again from fresh. I would change the water on these every two weeks, but if you're looking for a plant that wants no direct light, this is definitely it for you. Okay, moving into highlights, so south and west facing windows. This is my number one plant for you. It's an Oxalis triangularis, and they're absolutely amazing. I mean, they're super easy to care for. They just need water once every three or four days, depending on how bright and hot the room is. They can survive in indirect light, as long as they have a lot of sun in that room throughout the day. So if you want them under a window, that's perfect. However, I wouldn't have these in the window or pressed up against the window. They grow massively fast and the leaves are really delicate. They're almost like petals. And if you've got any sort of condensation against the window, they are impossible to prise off, so you will break the plant. This is a plant that I recommend for anyone at any skill level. I mean, look how massive it's grown. They grow from little tubers, which you can buy online, or I'm sure you can find this at a local garden centre or house plant shop. And they're really inexpensive. One thing that I will say for any beginner growing oxalis, do not fret, you have not killed it come autumn or winter, they go dormant. One really cool thing that I will mention about these is that they follow the sun. So if you have it facing one direction one day, you'll notice that throughout the day the leaves move and then they do actually shut up at night, which is really cool because it means that you've got a moving plant in your home and it's not just a static bit pressed up against the wall. They do flower, but the flower's pretty insignificant. They're just a brighter shade of purple. But any more information that you want on that plant, Go check out my Oxalis care video and you'll find all different varieties there to talk more in depth about the care that they need. So this is a type of succulent, they're actually called sedum, otherwise known as burrow's tail, donkey tail, and you can probably find them in most houseplant shops and potentially some big box stores. I've only pulled down my small ones for now because I don't want to move my absolutely massive hanging one, but one thing I will say these like bright, direct sun. So if you've got a windowsill or you want to hang a plant in a window, these are the ones for you. There's several different varieties and this one is known as the jelly bean commonly. They go bright pink if they get enough sunlight. This is pulled probably about three foot back from a southwest window. So it does get all day direct sun, but if I was to put it right up against the window, it would go hot pink. You'll notice when this needs water because the leaves will start to shrivel and then you just water it 
honestly hold back on water with these. I probably water these about once every three weeks and they like to be dry, they're a type of succulent. This is one mistake that a lot of beginners make with these sorts of plants. Any sort of succulent or cacti, hold off on the water, you will thank me for that later. Just quickly as well, if you've got kids or any animals that can reach these or you're gonna hang it somewhere, make sure that it's not somewhere that gets a lot of foot traffic. If you knock these, you will find what I call little pellets, which are just the leaves that have snapped off. If you do find a load where somebody's knocked it or you accidentally knock it, just get a pot of soil and sprinkle them on top. There's no need to plant them in or bury them or anything like that and they will produce new plants. I tend to put it under a glass dome so that it speeds the process up. Right, the next plant on my list are Hoyas. These are absolutely incredible and I'm really sorry in advance because as soon as you start researching them, you will want absolutely every variety that you can find. There are some really common ones, such as the Hoya Kerii and the Hoya Carnosa. This is the Hoya Carnosa Compacta. You get the tricolours and all different sorts of Hoyas. They've got super waxy leaves that keep in the moisture, so do not overwater these. I water these about once every two weeks, and there's a super easy way to tell how you water them. All you do is you rub your fingers over the leaves, and if they start to wrinkle, that means that they need water. If you've watered them a few days ago and they're still wrinkling, give them time to soak up that water. These are especially prone to root rot, so do not overwater. But as you'll see, they almost don't look real. Their flowers are absolutely incredible. They come out almost as an upside down bouquet, and they look like little wax or candy flowers. They have different scents, and some even smell like butterscotch. So again, I am really sorry if I've opened a can of worms for you here, and now all of your money is going on Hoya. I have these pulled back from the southwest window, or sat right underneath. This one gets no direct light whatsoever, but very, very bright indirect light. Again, you can let these trellis, or you can just leave them to hang, all different sorts of Hoyas. Research the Hoya that you're looking at because not all varieties of this plant are the same, but this is something that I would really recommend if you want something that's medium care and will give you incredible results. One thing I will say before moving on from Hoyas is there's something called the heart-shaped Hoya, otherwise known as Hoya Kerii. Now these are really common and you tend to find just one heart in a little pot. These tend not to grow further than one leaf you need some stem on the cuttings, and if you can get one with a few leaves, not just two hearts in front of each other, because again, this is just two leaves shoved in a pot. Those will live for a few years, but they're not gonna grow, and I'm really sorry if you've got one at home. This is a jade plant. You might have seen these in places like takeaway restaurants, or you know your grandma's home, they're really brilliant and need hardly any care. All they need is a spot with direct light from the south window and water maybe once every two to three weeks, I'd say. You can prune them back so they can have that bonsai look and there's videos all over YouTube on how you do that. Another cool thing is if you just pop a leaf off like that, all you do is you shove that on top of soil, keep the soil relatively dry, water it maybe again once every three weeks, and that will start to grow a new plant. There's not much to say on these to be honest because they are such easy care plants. I shower mine maybe once every three weeks just to get a lot of the dust off the leaves. The one notable thing about this plant is that if it gets sun stress, it does go a shade of purpley red on some of the leaves. If you're getting dried up brown leaves, don't worry about it, just pick them off and chuck them away. Just make sure that you're watering this as and when you need to. If your leaves go mushy, and you'll know what I'm talking about if you are having this problem, you are watering far too much and not giving this plant enough light. This plant will tell you when it needs watering because leaves will start to wrinkle. Again, I'll put a close up of that on the screen now. And don't worry, if you watered this a few days ago and the leaves are still wrinkling, they're just absorbing the water. They will fatten up again. These are a really cool plant, and I'm sure you can find cuttings of this locally for just a couple of quid. You know, it'll be really cheap for you, but the results are absolutely incredible.
Right, you might be thinking, what the hell is that plant? And why does it look like that? This is actually quite an old plant I've got. It's a Kalanchoe baharensis. I think that's how you pronounce it. But it's got very velvety leaves. It's a type of succulent. This actually needs watering because you can see that the leaves are curling in. Now, a lot of Kalanchoe produce pups along their leaves. So you'll see things such as the mother of thousands. And you just pop these off put them in soil and it's a whole new plant that you can give to your friends or even that's the way that you can get free plants for yourself. With this particular variety of Callan Curry, pups just produce out of the soil. Now when I say pups I'm talking about baby plants. This particular type is extremely cool. They supposedly absorb radon. So if you've got a lot of granite in your area or you have granite fireplace or something like that, this would be an ideal plant for that room. They like full bright sun again they can be pulled back and have a little bit more indirect light but i would make sure that this at least gets some direct light throughout the day they do lose their leaves throughout their growing time and i really wouldn't worry about this because obviously they produce a lot more this is another succulent so i'd water this once every two to three weeks depending on where you've got it in your home and in what light conditions but this is a really cool unusual plant and there's a hell of a lot of different varieties of Callan Curry that you can look into and they should be fairly cheap. Another great plant for beginners are cacti. These thrive on neglect and when I say neglect do not overwater these. They need water maybe once a month and if you've got them in a southwest windowsill they will thrive. You'll notice on a lot of these that they tend to shrivel the same as the burrow's tail and that's when they need watering. Don't hold off on water if it's been a couple of weeks and you think, oh, no, I shouldn't really be watering this yet because it's not been a whole month. Water it anyway as long as the soil is completely dry. Now, I've got a few different types of cactus here. I've got the spiral, the lophoceris, and the famous booby cactus. These tend to be a bit more expensive, but again, totally worth it if you want a plant that thrives on neglect. They don't all have spines. So if you're scared of a child or a cat walking into a spine or getting a spine in their finger or if you're scared of cacti yourself, this Lophoceris doesn't have any spines whatsoever so I can literally grab it and it won't hurt me. These do need full sun, don't have it pulled back from a window, I really wouldn't recommend them for in a northeast facing window. Have them on a south or west facing window sill. Otherwise, they're just going to shrivel up. These are prone to rot because people overwater them. If you've already started your houseplant hobby and you've cared for a lot of these plants already, then these I would recommend to you. They are on the rare spectrum, but to be honest, they are still easily available. You just might have to hunt harder. You might not be able to get them in a big box store. You might have to go to a specialist houseplant shop or look online. Now, the first one that I'm going to talk about is probably the most common. It's the Philodendron Micans. This is a really stunning velvet leaf plant with red backs to the leaves and it's a vining plant. It's got very similar care to the pothos, it just needs a bit higher humidity. Now, if you're wondering, oh my god, I don't have high humidity in my home, it's so easy. You can spray these a couple of times a day with water or create a pebble tray or you know, even just have dishes of water on the radiators or in the windowsills of your home. Now, obviously, we're sat in a southwest room and these probably are pulled about eight foot back from the window. They get hardly any direct sun, but that's not to say that you can't keep them in a northeast window. These will get smaller leaves, the less light that they get. And if you give it something to trellis up, if you gave it a moss pole or clipped it to the wall, they would get a lot bigger. The only thing I will say is if you trellis this onto the wall, just be careful because they do have aerial roots, which basically act as suckers so that it can grip. So it might damage your wall a little bit, but if you keep an eye on it, I'm sure it'll be fine. These are becoming a lot more common and you know, the demand for them is less. So you should be able to find these quite easily. You can again, have them as binding or hanging plants. It really is completely up to you. I let the soil dry out between waterings. I probably water this once a week and I think it's just a very low maintenance plant which produces great results. Right, the next plant I'm gonna talk about 
has a lot of controversy as to whether it's an easy plant to care for or not. In my experience, it has been so easy and has produced such great growth results. It's a dark form jewel orchid. I, again, have this in a fairly high humidity room. You can see in relation to where the micans is, how far back it is. And again, it's got really beautiful leaves. They've got almost lightning stripes down them. And the back of the leaves are, again, this really beautiful burgundy. They're easy to propagate, you just snap a bit of branch off and shove it in soil and it will produce a whole new plant. These do get pups coming out of the soil again. I think this year, I've only had this for a few months, but it's produced about seven or eight pups in the soil, so that gives you an idea of just how quickly it'll grow. With watering, again, I do the same as I do with the micans. I let it dry out and then saturate the soil and I really haven't had any problems with this plant. If you do have this plant and you get crispy edges, that is a lack of humidity. So just put a pebble tray underneath it. Make sure the plant isn't sat with a drainage hole into the water because that can affect the roots. Finally, we've got the Philodendron varicosum. And I know that some of you might have been wondering throughout the video what the hell this plant is. This is considered a rare plant, but it's coming much more into the market. So the prices are dropping and you should be able to pick one of these up for about 50, 60 quid. Again, they're another velvet plant. As you can see, there's a bit of a theme here, but the backs of the leaves are this almighty red veining. And I'll insert a close up of the stems because they're hairy and almost spider-like. I absolutely love them. And I think actually this is potentially the easiest plant in my home. Again, it needs high humidity. Now, when I talk high humidity, I'm talking 50% and up. Obviously, this will thrive in a bathroom with a bright window. I do believe that this would tolerate a northeast facing window as long as it was getting some direct light in the morning. Again, I have this in the southwest room pulled back from the window so it doesn't get much direct light. And I've given it a pole and hope that the leaves will start to get bigger. You don't have to put a pole in this. If you have a couple of bamboo stakes, you can just use that or you can just leave it to grow how it wants to grow. The leaves might shrink a little, but it will still be a healthy plant. Again, like the other two, I let this plant dry out. It does tend to tell me when it needs water because you'll notice that all the leaves start dropping a little. As soon as that happens, I give it water straight away. One thing that I will mention about both this and the philodendron micans is if you've got a new leaf coming, make sure that you've got high humidity. If you haven't got high humidity, spray the plant and spray the new leaves that are unfurling. I'll insert some damage of when I was away and I wasn't here to spray a leaf or fill up my humidifier and you'll see that there's type of crinkling on the leaf and it never fully recovers from that so that leaf could always be bent. Now these last three plants that I've mentioned should not break your bank. Do not pay over £60 for this, don't pay over £15 for the micans and I honestly wouldn't pay over £12 for the jewel orchid you can find them cheap. There is no reason why you should be spending hundreds of pounds on these plants. So there we have it, my top 14 house plants for beginners. I honestly believe if you do your research and with a bit of trial and error, you are able to keep all of the plants that I've mentioned alive today if you have the right light conditions. I really hope this has helped you all and get you into house plants because it's such a great community and you know, it's a harmless hobby. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you think that I've missed out any houseplants or you've had an experience with these which isn't the same as me, leave it in the comments below because we just want to educate new houseplant hobbyists. If you like this content and you want more in-depth care videos, please subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.